Hello, may the Lord be with you today. Forty days after Easter, today we celebrate the feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into the heavens to be seated at the right hand of God. And this event, Ascension, honestly, is kind of a feast that doesn't get a lot of attention nowadays. Certainly not as much as Good Friday, Easter, Christmas, or even Epiphany. It just doesn't get that same level of attention, a detail that we think about when we think about high feast days in the church. The practical reason for this is that in our economic world, it, Ascension falls on a Thursday, and there's work on Thursday, so church services are less attended. But ascension is important. It's the day when our Lord ascends into heaven, when Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus, true God, now seated there, but also true man, our brother, a man just like we are, flesh and blood, seated in the place of power at the Father's almighty right hand. It's a huge moment. And let's hear that account. We read today from Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 11. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not right for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Again, today, this high feast of ascension, we have this great moment where a man, a God, Jesus Christ, the person, the word of God himself ascends into heaven, living again to be seated at the right hand of God. But you may say, like the disciples, why is the earthly kingdom not happening now? Why are you not inaugurating all these things? Why is everything not perfect now? Oh, Lord Jesus, why must you go? Well, there were other promises that needed to be fulfilled. Jesus had fulfilled the promises of the Messiah. He had come. He had died. He had risen again. But there were still other promises. Promises that would be fulfilled just a few days later on Pentecost when people from all over the world would confess and speak in tongues and prophesy, fulfilling the prophecy in Joel. And those people, the apostles, the converts, would take the faith to all the ends of the earth, thus fulfilling those prophecies. But one promise had not been fulfilled. For the apostles died waiting on that promise. Generations before you and I have died waiting on the promise. And you and I are still waiting for the promise. The promise that Jesus will come again. As the angel says, you who look up and see him going into the heavens, you will see him coming again. There is one final promise to be fulfilled. And Jesus keeps all his promises. All of the other ones have been fulfilled. God sent 
his Christ, his Messiah, his promised Savior. Jesus came, he lived, he ministered, he died, he healed the blind, the mute, the sick. He died, was buried for our sins, but yet rose again, promising new life. He ascended into heaven, was seated at the right hand of God. He sent his Holy Spirit here for his church to guide, to strengthen, to comfort, and to cheer us in this life. But one final promise remains. The promise that he will come again to inaugurate his kingdom, to consummate everything, to finish all things. The promise contained at the Revelation, in Revelation 22 has still not come to pass. When Jesus says, behold, I am coming soon and very soon. This is what we wait on. We wait on our Lord to fulfill his last promise. So I invite you now to pray with me. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so thank you for tuning in today to celebrate this high feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, a big day where we remember that our Lord sits at the right hand of God, true God, true man, now seated there, our brother, our advocate, our friend, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I pray that you've enjoyed this, and I would point you down to the description below this video to check on the schedule for the next video. And so I pray that the Lord blesses the rest of your day. Thank you.